A question I commonly get asked by you guys is how am I such a magician in VS Code? Apparently when I'm coding out in my tutorials, it looks like I'm doing wizardry in my code editor. And so in today's video, I thought I'd share my favorite eight productivity hacks that I use on a regular basis to speed up my coding process and basically ensure that I don't have to type everything out from scratch. As always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. And with that all said, let's get started with number one. Also, just letting you know, I made a t-shirt. If you want to support the channel, you can pick one up at store.small james.com it's literally the most comfortable t-shirt i've ever owned the fit is amazing i wear it every single day so yeah store.smalljames.com back to the video. So all up, there's about eight commands I use on a regular basis to really boost my productivity in my code editor. And to demonstrate all of them, I've just got open a random code file from the JavaScript course. And in here, I'll walk through all the different commands, how they work, what they do so that you can start using them too. So first up on our list, we have the auto format, auto code formatter. And so in this case, just here, if I add a whole lot of random spaces, my code looks all messy. Everything's all over the show. The command I use to auto format my code and fix everything even if I tabbed a whole lot of my objects into the wrong place is option shift F so if I hit option shift F on my keyboard keep in mind this is on the Mac keyboard we can see that everything goes back into shape and it's absolutely brilliant it just makes your code look perfect if you're in JavaScript everything is indented adequately and it's super quick and easy so I'll typically use this every few lines of code that I write to make sure it's all nice and neat, you know, bang, back into place, perfect. So that's number one, option shift F is the auto formatter. Second on the list is the multi-select. So let's say in this case, I wanted to add a value onto the end of this array, but I also wanted to add it onto the end of this array. If I hit option on my keyboard, and click in both places, we can see that I now have a double cursor, and then I can type the seven in both places and it works perfectly. And then I could click in loads of places and this is absolutely brilliant. For example, if I wanted to add a whole lot of values to the end of the array and I had the same syntax, I could go comma, have a new key, so on and so forth. And then I could auto format everything afterwards. So once again, the way that the multi line select works is I hold down the option key and then I just click in the additional destination. So just in here, if I wanted to add a value to the end of each of these arrays, I could click there and I could click there. Then I can just go ahead and type on all three lines. Number three on the list is the no overflow. So in this case right here, we can see that the code goes off the page, which is super annoying. I don't like horizontal scrolling in my code interface. And I don't want to have to enter this comment down onto a new line and recomment it down there. That's no fun. So we can make sure that our code auto wraps by using the option Z command. So if I hit option and Z, we can see that it auto wraps all the code on my page and that will continue to wrap all the way down so that everything is nice and visible within whatever screen size I have available. If I hit the option Z command again, it goes back to the overflow view and then option Z, everything is wrapped on the page. So that is also super useful. Typically the files will default to overflowing the page. Whenever I see it happen, I'll option Z. And you can see that the shadow at the edge of the page goes away, which is just another way that you can rest assured that you don't have any horizontal overflow issues. So that was number three on the list. Number four on the list is the auto swap. Now just here, we can see I am swapping these lines just like that. It's super easy. I can do it anywhere. I can move this line around. Likewise, I could swap these orders. I could even come down here and I could move the greet inside the function. It's super convenient. And basically how this command works, the line swap, like I could swap the order of these arrays, is you select the line that you want to move and you hold the option key and then you arrow up or down depending on which way you want to move that line of code. For example, let's say I have this loop right here and I wanted to encapsulate all this below information inside of the loop. I can simply move this one line down a whole bunch by holding down the option key and then using the arrow keys to navigate that line around really easily. It's great for reordering information. I use it all the time and it's a great one to remember. So that is option and then the arrow keys. So I think we're up to number five now and the next one is the selection. So just here, I could come up to my code and I can you know, manually select it using my mouse, but I like to keep my hands on my keyboard. So instead what I'll use is I'll hold down shift and I can use the vertical keys to shift select different values. 
I can use the horizontal keys to determine exactly where I want to select. So that's super useful. That's the shift up and down. And then if I held shift plus command and then use the arrow keys, it selects that entire line. So if I use the shift plus command, instead of just moving one line or one increment, it will go as far as I can. For example, if I hold shift plus command and go up, it will select everything up. And that also works for everything down as well. So shift plus command and then the arrow keys to get maximum selection in any one direction. Like so, for example, if I wanted to highlight this whole comment, I could use shift command to get that whole line. And then I could use the shift and the down key to select that as well. And then I could move that whole line around using the option plus the arrow keys. So there's loads you can do within your keyboard and you don't need to select your mouse. If I wanted to comment all of this code, I just use the shift up. And then if I wanted to go all the way to the left, I hold down command and jump to the left. And then I could do the increments by only holding the shift and the arrow keys. So that's a super good one to know. And likewise, in a similar vein, if I hold control, that's going to jump me between either end. So control and the arrow key. For example, if I wanted to edit some code at the end of the sentence, instead of just using the arrows to get out there or using my mouse to click the end of the sentence, I'll just use the control hit out and I'm out there. Control and I'm at the other end. Control to the right at the end of the sentence. Super handy. Control to the bottom. I'm at the bottom of the code. Control and the up key and I'm at the top of the code. Another great one to kind of get familiar with. And it's very similar to the shift command for the selection as well. Up next on the list is we have the duplicate line. Now the duplicate line is similar to the move line where here I'm using option and the up and down keys to move this line up and down. Now if I hold shift and option at the same time, that's going to duplicate that line of code. Now this is incredibly useful and I love using it if I have console.logs and I want to add a few of them. I can just hold shift and option and then use the up or down keys depending on where I want the duplicate line of code to show up. So that is a super handy one to know. And another example would be if I was in this object, what I could do is I could use the control to the right that takes me to the end of the sentence. I could add a comma and then I could duplicate this key a whole lot of times. And then I could even move these other lines around like so. It's super easy. I could shift select this whole thing backspace it and I haven't had to use my mouse for any of this but anywho that is the duplicate line it's a brilliant one to know and that is shift and option on the line that you want so I'm on this line 122 right here I hold down the shift and the option keys and I either go up or I go down it's the same thing and it duplicates the line the next one on the list and this one's pretty common you probably already know it but it's the control Z for example if I duplicate this line or perhaps I duplicate it one too many times where the duplication uses the shift plus option and then the arrow keys. If I wanted to reverse that process, I just use control Z. So that's a very common one to know and it's absolutely brilliant. And it's the alternative to manually going edit and then undo using the mouse. So we can just use control Z and that's going to undo everything that we need to do. On the Mac, it's actually command Z, but it works the same on both Windows and Mac. And then the last one I like to use all of the time is actually just the IntelliSense, the VS Code IntelliSense. Helps me write out code really quickly. For example, if I type in console, the IntelliSense already comes up with the two options and I just get into the habit of hitting enter. So I can hit console, I type the period, the IntelliSense is suggesting log, I hit enter and it's straight up there. And that's just a great habit to get into is taking advantage of VS Code's IntelliSense, which is the suggested prompt system. For example, I only have to type TR, true comes up and hitting enter is often faster than entering out the remaining keys. Another example up here, I have console.log age status. All I have to do is type age and then the S and age status comes up, hit enter and the IntelliSense fills it out for us. Now I can control Z to undo that. I can option plus shift and arrow key to duplicate the line and control Z to undo that process once again. And that pretty much sums up all the VS codes that I use on a regular basis to increase my productivity in my code editor and just write code way faster. Now there are also some extensions that I have installed. For example, there's one that helps me build React functional components incredibly quickly. And if that's something you'd be interested in learning more about which ones I have installed and how they work, leave a comment down below, let me know and I'll make a video on them too. Anyway, I hope these extensions help you increase your productivity in your code editor. If you've enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Love that support and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.